Okay, um, we started in Romans chapter 6 yesterday, and we're going to continue today. We're going to go uh, to the 12th verse. Verse 12, Romans 6. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it and the lust thereof. Now, we started and we did the first uh, 11 verses in Romans 6 yesterday. We're going to continue on um, this morning and this evening also. But um, you see, you have the ability to choose as a Christian. Some say that you don't have any ability to choose, that God has foreordained everything and it's all cast in concrete. I don't believe that for a minute. I don't believe salvation is cast in concrete. Those that uh, say that God has chosen some to go to heaven and some to go to hell, he's chosen you to go to heaven if you believe, but you have the ability to believe. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and thou shalt be saved. Uh, so uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we have the ability to choose uh, you say, oh, no, they say, oh, you have no ability. Oh, yes, you do. You're not some kind of a zombie. You're not some kind of a robot uh, that, that God tells you to do everything just the way he wants you to. I do too many bad things and too many stupid things uh, to do that. Just, just come on in and sit down. Yeah. Yeah, just come on in and have a seat. Um, yeah, we're having church. Now, um, so it says here in verse 12, uh, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. The thir verse 13, we're in, we're in Romans chapter 6. Someone help her with a Bible and, and put it in. It's on page 12, 12 in your Bible. And verse 12 it says, uh, uh, verse 13, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You see, I was saved on April 4th, 1969. How many of you are saved people here today? You know you're going to heaven. Okay, if you're saved, we're not supposed to yield ourselves to sin but we're supposed to yield ourselves unto righteousness. We're supposed to walk in, in uh, the image of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and live as righteous people. Now, you, you have the option as a Christian, as I have an option as a Christian, to either walk in the lust of the flesh or in the Spirit of God. We can do either one of those things, but we have the choice to make. As I said, uh, those that believe in... Uh, God has foreordained everything, and we're a bunch of puppets and robots, and and, uh, and we have to do. I mean, why why would God ordain the vast majority of people uh, to go to hell and just a few go to heaven if 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 He was controlling this whole thing and we had no choice in the matter? Now, if you go to hell, if you're here today and you go to hell, or if you're out there in the viewing audience today. And, and you go to hell, it's going to be on your part, not on God's. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So if you think you're some kind of elitist or some kind of a, a chosen elected person, that you say, they, 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 they act so humble, but they're, they're so hypocritical. They say, oh, I don't know why God hath chosen me. I'm so unworthy. It almost makes me throw up when I talk to these people, and 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 they uh, uh, they tell me about this hogwash, about their super position elected in Christ, and they're so undeserving. They sure act like they're deserving. They act like elitists. Uh, they 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 act like they're better, and uh, most of them they kind of look down their nose at all of these folks that are going to hell. Listen, anybody that's saved, they're a sinner saved by grace. I, I know that I don't deserve heaven, but on April 4th, 1969, I turned from my sin and I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you have done that? You've been born again. Oh, praise God. The Bible says you must be born again. Let's go on to verse 14. It says, For sin 
shall not have dominion over you. Now, I'm telling you something. If you're saved today, alcohol does not have to have dominion over you if you're saved today. If you're saved today, uh, your sex addiction does not have to control you as a saved person. I'm talking about, some of the, about that some of the men this morning. It doesn't have to do that as a saved person. You don't have to live like that. Uh, you're lying and you're stealing and you're doping and your laziness and all of that. That does not have to be your choice if you're a saved person. Now, it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. You see, grace is a wonderful thing, but grace is not grace is not uh, the license to sin. You see, a lot of people take grace as a license to sin. They say, well, uh, grace of God, grace of God, uh, I know I drink, I know I, I smoke, I know I do this. Someone asked me today, a newer person in here, that, uh, well, I'm just going to go out and, 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 and grab a cigarette before we have children. I said, no, you're not. Once you come in here, <laughs> you got to stay in here and go to church. And I hope you don't smoke when you go back out, but it's no good. It's going to give you cancer. You might uh, you might get cancer of the tongue, and you think I can't and can't help because you're kind eating away from cancer. You want to talk like that? I don't. Thank God I quit smoking when I got saved. I used to smoke three and a half packs of Pall Mall every day, them old nasty Pall Mall cigarettes. I, I smoked Pall Mall instead of Lucky Strike because Pall Mall was longer than Lucky Strike, and I could get a few more drags off it. That's why I smoked Pall Mall instead of Lucky Strike or Camels. Because they were they were a little bit shorter than Paul Wall, but I I had no cigarette, I had no cigarette since April fourth, nineteen sixty nine. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, sin shall not have dominion. A little old cigarette should not have dominion over you if you're a Christian. Alcohol shall not have dominion over you. And on and on. You name your sin. Your sin might not be my sin, and my sin might not be your sin. But I'm telling you what, sin shall not have dominion over you because you yield to, to sin, you walk in the flesh, uh, and, and you do not yield to this. If, uh, the, the Bible says uh, that we should walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. The Bible all through the beginning of this chapter it talked about how we should be dead to sin. And as, and as we're uh, buried with Christ, uh, we we use it uh, a lot of the expositors of scripture talk to it about uh, uh, water baptism which I talk about it uh, when we baptize people in our baptistry here but I'm, I think uh, I think it has more of a reference to, to spiritual uh, baptism we're baptized with the spirit of God the spirit of God uh, we come into the to the uh, uh, the body of Christ and when we're saved, we're baptized into the body of Christ by the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives within us, uh, so we no longer uh, have to walk in the flesh. But we do. How, how many of you, like I do, sometimes we walk in the flesh and not in the Spirit as a Christian? Have you ever done that? It's way too often today that uh, uh, if we walk in the Spirit, we'll not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh and if we sin we do it willing fully mm -hmm. I was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday and talking about this particular uh, a, a subject and uh, about a subject that many of the people that come our way are prone to and that's to alcohol to drink an alcoholic beverage yeah uh, uh, sad to say we as Christians don't have to drink alcohol anymore uh, you, if you're a Christian and you drink alcohol still, it's because you want to, not because you can't. The Bible says uh, very clearly, the Bible says uh, very clearly that we should uh, uh, that we should yield uh, to the Spirit, and we do not have to fulfill the lusts and the desires of the flesh. Uh, so uh, that's what we need to do. We need to. Uh, uh, yield under the spirit and not under the flesh. Now, the Bible very clearly teaches that we can have victory. And it tells us in 1 Corinthians 10.13, it says, Sin 
uh, it says, There had no temptation taken you, but is common to man. But God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it. So you and I, after we're saved, we sin because we want to. We have a means of escape. God has told us he will not tempt us more than we are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape. We come to that point. We're tempted. We can escape. We think about it, and we make a wrong decision. I've done that. You've done that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. If you're true, uh, <clears throat> maybe the reason that you can't conquer sin, it's been conquered through the blood of Christ. Maybe the reason you can't conquer sin in your own life, uh, uh, let me just uh, tell you why that might be. Uh, it might be because you don't want to. Uh huh. It might be because you choose to live a life uh, that is not in compliance. It tells us all through chapter 6 here about the flesh and the law and uh, that, that we, of course, can't keep the law. Let's go on. Uh, verse 15. What then? Shall we sin? Look at now. Shall we sin because we are not under the law? This is just what I'm talking about now. But under grace? God forbid. God forbid, don't, don't, don't use this excuse, oh, grace, grace, grace forgives, God is good, God is love, uh, 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 he'll forgive me, so I can sin, and God says it's okay. No, uh, he's liable to beat the tar out of you. That's what it said in, 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 in Hebrews 12. It says, if you're a child of God and not a bastard, we don't even know what a bastard is today. I think about 50% of the... Uh, children born today are bastard children. It means they have no legitimate father. It means that they, they, they have not been born under the holy uh, gods of matrimony. But they are not. We don't even talk about that anymore. And we have all kinds of... An and, and illegitimate child uh, is called uh, in times of old and in the Bible a bastard child. You call me a bastard when I was a, when I was a kid? You had a fight on your hands. Uh, we're going to fight over that. And we don't even know what a bastard is today. But it's illegitimate. So what God said, if, if you're a true child of God and you've been born again, if, if you sin, God's going to spank you. I'm going to tell you this. I fear God. Maybe you don't fear God. Maybe you don't fear God and you've never been saved. Maybe you don't fear God as his child. Well, so what's the fear of God? The fear of God is a reverential trust in God with a hatred for evil. You better trust God and hate evil because if you don't as his child, you're going to get spanked. Now, am I going to sin as a Christian? 1 John 1, 1.8 says, If you say that you have no sin, you lie, and the truth is not in you. But it says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Oh, that's what I want to do. Uh, I want to be cleansed, and I have to daily, and you have to daily confess your sins uh, because uh, we are all sins. But, you know, um, uh, we can sin, uh, and, and, and we do sin, but we shouldn't sin if we walk in the Spirit. So it says, what then? Uh, shall we sin because... We are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Verse 16, look at there. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. Now this is written to Christians. If you're a saved person, this is talking to you. Who do you yield to regularly? This is what it's talking about in verse 16. Look at this now. It says, Know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants are you to whom we obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Oh, you see, who, do you go, who are you going to yield today as a Christian? What are you going to do? You're going to hear the preacher and get your ears tick a little bit and you go out of here and still live like the devil, huh? Same old dope, same old sex, same old lying, same old stealing, same old laziness, whatever, so forth. 
I don't know. That's what this is talking about here. Look at verse 17. Now, isn't this good? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. You see, it talks about servants of sin in the past tense. It talks about before April the 4th, 1969, some 48 years ago in two months. It talks about being in the past. Ye were the servants of sin. I had no choice in the matter previously. I was a servant of sin. I was a child of the devil. If you're not saved today, you're a child of the devil, and you can do nothing about it. The devil leads you around by the nose because you're his servants. You have no victory over Satan. You have no victory over uh, the, uh, the world, the flesh, uh, and the devil. It says, For be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart. What does it mean to be obey from the heart? What it means to obey from the heart, it means that you're born again. That the Bible says, that you've confessed with your mouth and you've believed in your heart and you've been born again. If you've done that, you are now a child of God. You are now a child of God. Yes, uh, you were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. The gospel was delivered to me by Pastor Broilo, April 4th, 1969, to my wife and I. He preached the gospel to me and my wife, 19310 Glenwood Lane, New Berlin, Wisconsin. It was about 1115 in the morning, and we trusted Christ. I was born again on April 4th, uh, 1969. Oh, what a wonderful day that was. Now look at verse 18. Listen to this now. Listen to how important this is. Being then made free from sin. Now listen to me. When you truly get born again, and the problem with some of you that are here today, you're not saved. You're not, you've never been born again. I was talking to something about this morning and talking about this and and uh, wasn't sure if they were born again. I told that particular person this morning that's sitting in the audience here this morning, I said, you better get it settled about being born again today. If you haven't got it settled about being born again, you better take care of that matter. Because, now listen to me, if you're born again, if you know you're born again, you're free from sin. You say, but pastor, I'm saved. I've been born again. But I still sin. So do I. The pastor's in the same ball game with you. But after you're saved... You can be free from sin. Listen now, but you're not free from sin because we want to sin. We sin because we want to sin as Christians. I don't, I'm just telling you, that's the way it is. We don't have to, but we do it by choice. Remember that great verse in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, to a Christian, there hath no temptation taken you, but is common to man. But God is faithful. And will not suffer you to be tempted above which ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that you can bear it. So you see, we're free from sin as a Christian, a born-again Christian, but we sin because we want to sin. Do you understand that? How many of you, do you understand, do you understand that today? We sin because we want to. And let me tell you something. If you're living in sin today, whatever sin that may be, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life, whatever it is, you're not a happy camper. You don't have joy in your heart. You're in turmoil. You need to turn that sin over to God and repent. I just, a good friend of mine that I love dearly, I know he's in sin. You know how I know he's in sin? He's a preacher, but I know he's in sin. You know why? He won't talk to me. He won't answer my text. He won't answer my, my telephone calls. I text him. I leave him messages. I texted him one word today with three exclamation points after it. Repent! He's in sin. I know he's in sin. 
He won't talk to me. I don't know what his shit is. I've got an idea. I'm not sure. Whatever it is, I know he needs to repent. Because when my brother preacher in Christ, who I've known for years, won't talk to me, he's in sin. I guarantee you that. He won't own up to it. I'm telling you. Maybe you're a Christian here today and you're in sin. You won't repent. Now, you know if you are or not. I don't know that. You know. You say, how, how do I know? You're miserable. You don't know which way's up. You're like a termite and a yo-yo. You don't know if you're going up or down. You're in sin. That's what happens with a Christian and uh, um, that's in sin. There's a big chapter here. Oh, being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. You see, here's what I need today. Here's what you need today. As a born-again Christian, you need to serve God. You need to serve righteousness. You need to do right. And you can, by faith in the Lord Jesus, the same way you got saved. Do you remember the day you got saved? I remember the day I got saved. I hope you remember the day you got saved. You say, I can't remember the day I got saved. You're probably not saved then. Make it today. Get saved. If you don't remember the day that when you were freed from sin and you and you repented and turned from your sins and called upon the name of the Lord and was saved, take care of it today. Maybe you just prayed a prayer because you thought I'd like to go to heaven. You can't go to heaven. Least ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. You understand you're gonna you're gonna go to hell unless you repent. Repent isn't isn't preached much today. You got all these TV evangelists and preachers and stuff that's around. Oh, just believe in Jesus and you go to heaven. Yeah, but the only way you can believe in Jesus is repent and and humble yourselves uh, like a child under the mighty hand of God. You'll perish, at least ye likewise repent. There's too many false Jesuses out there. There's hundreds of false Jesuses. You better get the one... Uh, that is uh, the, uh, the everlasting uh, Jesus Christ that has uh, forever been with the Father uh, and with the Holy Ghost, the second person of the Trinity that died for your sins, and you believe that he's, he's uh, died for your sins and shed his blood, and then you'll be free from sin. I can't go to hell. Ain't no way I could go to hell. I'm a born-again, blood-washed Christian. I can be disobedient. I might miss many rewards. I, I might miss a whole bunch of rewards when I go to heaven because uh, my works have been wood, hay, and stubble, and I haven't done those things that have honored God. That might be the case, and it might be your case. There ain't no way. Cause, now, I'm not going to heaven because anything I've done, only reason I'm going to heaven or anybody can go to heaven is they believe that Jesus shed his blood on the cross for your sins personally. Don't tell me you're Pentecostal or Baptist or Methodist or Catholic. That don't amount to a hill of beans. It means nothing. Salvation is personal. My mother and father were Assemblies of God Pentecostal missionaries. I was saved in a Methodist church. I'm a Baptist preacher. None of those three denominations will get you to heaven. Only personal faith, which I got on April 4th, 1969. You better have that. You must be born again. Come the serv I'm the servant of righteousness. I didn't say I'm always righteousness, but I should but I should be I should live a righteous life. I should we don't talk about holiness anymore. A, a, a Christian uh, should be holiness. We should have holiness in our personal lives and in and in our church. We should be you, you say uh, they say, Oh, they're a holiness church. Every church ought to be a holiness church. If your church isn't a holiness church, if there's not holiness practice in your personal lives and in the church you go to, you better get out of it. You, you living in some kind of wicked church that sings songs about Jesus, but it's the wrong Jesus because <clears throat> there's no personal righteousness in the church and there's no direction uh, to holiness living. Uh, you better get out of that church. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. 
For as ye have yielded your members, servants, unto uncleanness. Have you done that as a Christian? You dare not. You dare not as a Christian yield your, your, your members or uh, your body uh, or your flesh to uncleanness. God help us. Have you done that sometime as a Christian? Have you yielded your members uh, to uncleanness? And how, how many here be honest about it? You've yielded as a Christian. You've yielded unto uncleanness. Have you ever done that? Got a couple people honest in here. Most of you on, on, ain't honest. Because if you're a Christian, sad to say, you will yield to uncleanness and things that are that are defiling, some kind of drugs or whatever, whatever that wickedness is. And sad to say, we as Christians can yield to uncleanness, but we shouldn't. And that's why you're so miserable. That's why you're so miserable. Oh, yeah. Uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity. Sin, sin, sin. God help us to, to, to put on the whole armor of God in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. Read that over, the whole armor of God. And above all, the shield of faith. The only way you're going to overcome sin and have victory, and not have an unclean life, and yield to uncleanness, uh, is that you'll put on, that have the shield of faith. Hold up that faith, and you'll be shielded from all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Amen? Amen. We fail to put it on. Even so now, yield ye your members, <coughs> servants to righteousness, unto holiness. Okay, that's what we have to do. Do you see why you're being defeated? You haven't yielded to righteousness on the holiness. Verse 20. For when we were when we the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. That's before you were saved, before my April 4th, 1969 salvation day. Verse 21. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Oh, okay. Are you, dear Christian friend, are you ashamed of some of the things you do sometimes? Are you ashamed? Come on. Are you ashamed? Yeah. 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 Let's get right with God. First John 1 9 says, We as Christians, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, how we need to do that. For the end of those things is death. And we, <clears throat> verse 22, But now, now being made free from sin, and become the, see, you're free from sin if you want to be. A Christian can sin if they want to, and sad to say you and I do too often in our life. Isn't that a shame? We have the ability to be free from sin because of the blood of Christ in our position. We've been reconciled to God. We're a child of God. And we could be free from sin, but we still choose to sin as a Christian. Shame on us. Isn't that miserable? Don't you just feel terrible when you, when you know you're doing wrong, but you choose sin over righteousness? How many of you really feel bad when you do? Well, I do. Everybody does. You should. If you're a real Christian, <coughs> if it don't bother you at all, you're probably a child of the devil still going to hell. You need to repent and get born again. But if you are saved, oh, the importance that you have your fruit on the holiness and the end everlasting life. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death and hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Isn't that wonderful? It's a free gift. I can't do anything to earn it. I can't do anything to keep it. I just need to accept it. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. There are no other name given amongst men <coughs> whereby we must be saved. John 1, 12. And on and on. Are you saved today? That's the question here uh, in our audience uh, uh, in the church. Or out there in the listening audience on uh, Facebook. Some watch on that and might be on the YouTube or whatever. Out there in the, uh, in the cyberspace. 
But listen, dear one, let me ask you here. Let me, let's just pray. bow our heads for prayer, please. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear ones here in our, in our auditorium, here in the church auditorium, you say, Pastor, I know I'm born again. I remember when I was saved. I'm a child of God. I know I'm a child of God. I know I'm born again. Heads bowed, eyes closed, just a preacher looking. But you know you're born again and saved. Would you raise your hand? Just slip your hand up. Okay, God bless you. Let me put your hands down. Some could raise their hands. Some couldn't. I'm glad if you're a child of God if you know it for sure. I do. I was saved April 4th, 1969. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I don't know if I've been born again. I, 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 I'm just not sure of the forgiveness of my sins, and I'm not sure I'm a born-again Christian. I need you to pray for me. Would you just slip? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, Pastor. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up if you're not sure you're going to heaven. Yes, I see that hand. Yes, I see that hand. Are there others? You're not sure you're going to heaven. Would you just slip your hand up? Anybody? Yes, God bless you. Anyone else? Just slip. It wouldn't hurt to pray for you, would it? If you're just not sure, just slip your hand up. Let me see that. <clears throat> Amen. God bless you. Lord, thank you for these hands, these honest folks. That was the Holy Spirit speaking to you and showing you your need for salvation. Oh, yes. Lord, I pray for these that have raised their hand that asked for prayer. I pray they could see the necessity of the born-again experience. And they can see there's nothing they can do to save their self other than repenting and turning from their sins and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. I believe you died for me and shed your blood and rose from the grave, and I'm putting all my hope of heaven in the fact that you died for my sins personally. Dear one, you can do that today. If you would do that, I'm going to pray out loud. And you that are here in the auditorium or you that are out there in the viewing audience, pray this prayer in your heart sincerely. This is the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. And the best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. If you prayed that prayer in your heart today and meant it, would you slip your hand up? Just slip it up high. Let me see your hands. I made, You made that prayer today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Lord, we've had a number of hands raised in the auditorium trusting Christ. Thank you for that. All the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repenteth, over a ninety and nine just people that need no repentance. There have been a number of hands raised here and probably out there in the viewing audience that say, I've been saved. I'm a child of God, but I'm not living like I should. There's some things in my life I know that aren't right, and I need to repent of them. I've backslidden in some areas of my life, and I need to repent and get back to God. God is speaking to me about it today. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, just a pastor looking around. You say, there's things I need to repent of as a Christian and get right with God. Would you slip your hand up? Just slip it up high. Let me see your hands. I need to repent. Is there anybody at all? Yes. A number of people. God bless you. God bless you. God bless each one of you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for these that have trusted Christ. Thank you for backsliders that have repented. And I pray for others that need to that haven't yet today. Bless now, dear Lord. We honor you. We love you. Thank you for the food. Bless our fellowship around the table now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you ask the Lord to save you today, or if you've got other questions, or you're a backslider and you need to talk, I'll be glad to talk with you afterward. You that are out there in the viewing audience, you can contact us. Uh, uh, hit the buttons that are necessary to, to contact me, and, and, uh, and we'll be glad to talk with you and try to help. If you made a decision for Christ, or if you haven't yet, or if you're a backslider, we'd be glad to help you. God bless you. We're glad for this service today.